Hey guys, it's Sandro here. In today's video, will be largely a review on Aftershine's graphene coating, also directly comparing it to a ceramic coating in the form of Secor 2K in relation to its application, looks, performance, and potential durability. Now, at 280 Aussie dollars, Aftershine's graphene coating is more than three times more expensive, and with a five-year durability claim, and being a self-described professional coating available to the public, I do expect the Aftershine to perform better. So I'm not saying this is a fair comparison, but what I am saying is that I know how Secor 2K performs. So it's really here to act as a baseline product to hopefully provide some good information as to what you can expect from the Art the Shine graphene coating. And if you stick around to the end, this video will also be largely about sharing my personal thoughts, experiences, and opinions with graphene coatings over the last couple of years, which may or may not surprise some of you. So first up, as I'm applying the Art the Shine graphene coating to a couple of test panels, the first being a single layer of each coating and the second being two layers of each coating, I'm just going to discuss the user experience. To start with, it has to be said that there is zero instructions in the box or information about its application from Art the Shine's own website, which is disappointing. Now, I'm not new to graphene coatings and I've had over a decade's experience applying ceramic coatings, so I wasn't too phased. But you would think that such an expensive coating would come with some information to point the user in the right direction. But with that aside, I'll share what I've personally discovered about it, which may be different to some. Firstly, there's no denying it's definitely a sticky and grabby coating to lay down. So you want to take it a little slower with your applicator or else it's not going to evenly spread across the panel. But it's not like it's all that difficult as long as you realize this and adjust your technique accordingly. Secondly, this isn't a coating that's going to level or flash like most others. So if you walk away for even a minute, you're going to get streaks and high spots that will be extremely difficult to remove. So you're actually going to have to immediately encourage and flash the coating to bond to the paint as you're wiping it down with your microfiber cloths to avoid any streaks in the finish. So whereas you typically wipe down a coating after it flashes to level and remove its excess, you're actually wiping the Art the Shine graphene coating to promote its flashing and bonding to the paint in a more even manner and as you continue to wipe, you're then leveling and removing its excess, which is important to understand. Thirdly, you're really going to need some sort of wetting agent to effectively remove the excess coating on the paint. Now, I did try my hardest to level down this coating streak-free with just using my cloths, but you'll be wiping and wiping beyond any reasonable time frame to get a perfect streak-free finish if you don't have any water or a little something on your cloth to help you out. So it's just not realistic to level down this coating without some sort of leveling agent. And it also has to be said that even with a damp cloth, it's still noticeably more work to wipe down than almost any consumer or professional based ceramic coating in my experience. Another thing that's really important to note about the Art the Shine graphene coating is that it needs a substantial amount of time for its first layer to cure enough before you can apply an additional layer. Initially, I tried layering it after two to three hours and the solvents in the coating actually seemed to break down that first layer within that time frame. And I also found that if I waited too long, like the next morning, the second layer really didn't seem to bond at that point and just get rejected. So in my case, I found that about five to six hours later worked well for an additional layer, which again is quite a different time frame than you'd expect. Now this is a little weird because coatings that tend to flash or streak on the paint as quick as this one also tend to cure and harden on the paint much quicker. So you can layer them after an hour or two, but I just didn't find that to be the case with this coating. Now it would have been nice to have this information to start with or at least some basic instructions from Art the Shine as I wouldn't expect most users to do this level of testing to figure this stuff out. But once I understood all the little characteristics of the coating and used a good method and technique to apply it, there's no doubting that it works. But you just have to appreciate that you're going to have to work much harder to apply and level down this coating compared to almost any other ceramic coating out on the market. 
Now, I completely understand that there will be some people that have used the Art to Shine graphing coding extensively and may disagree with my user experience conclusions, but it would just be a plain and simple lie to state that this is a user-friendly or rewarding coding to apply, especially when used side by side with something like Sequartz UK, which is dramatically easier, quicker and nicer to work with. But if you have the will and understanding of how it works, it's most certainly a doable application that I'm sure will get easier the more and more you use this coding. After the coating had time to fully cure, I inspected the applicator cloths to gather a little more information. As expected, the cloths with Seacourt's UK turn rock hard as it always does, but the cloth with the Art This Shine graphene coating just turned mildly stiffer. Now, this isn't necessarily a good or bad thing, depending on the goal of the graphene coating and its particular characteristics but it's still interesting to note and just a little more information about it and what you can expect about its hardness on the paint. Now due to circumstance, I actually left the panels to cure indoors for over a month prior to testing. And then I placed the second panel with two layers of each coating outdoors for an additional month, which we'll look at in a bit. But in a side-by-side -side test, looking at a single layer of these coatings and judging the gloss and saturation levels, it's honestly very, very close. Seacourt's UK 3.0 is in my experience and opinion, just a fantastic looking coating. So for the Art to Shine coating to look just as good actually says a lot of good things about it in relation to its looks and its ability to amplify the finish of automotive paint. So in any case, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with the way this graphene coating looks, which I think is great. But I'll leave it up to you guys to decide which one you think looks better, but I honestly struggled to pick a winner either way. The next test was evaluating the slickness or lack of friction that these two coatings create on automotive paint. Now, unlike the last test, this one was pretty clear cut. The Arthur Shine graphene coating has really impressive amounts of slickness that truly puts it closer to a slick car sealant rather than a ceramic coating, which do tend to be a bit more grabby by nature. Now there are a few ceramic coatings, such as Optimum Gloss Coat and NV Nova Evo, that are also quite slick. But I'd still say that the Art to Shine graphene coating is a little slicker, and certainly much slicker compared to a typical ceramic coating. But even during the application process, before it's had time to fully cure, you can definitely feel that it's uncommonly slick and actually kind of rewarding when you do your final wipe down. Now one big claim that this and other graphene coatings make is their resistance to water spotting and superior self-cleaning abilities. So I placed the panel with two coats of each coating outdoors for an additional month and did my best to create some quite aggressive water spots and allow it to get nice and dirty for this test. As you guys can hopefully see, there's no significant difference from one coating to the other in relation to the dirt that it's accumulated or the water spots that have stained the finish, which is quite bad across the board. But what I'm going to do is start by gently cleaning the panel to see if the water spots and dirt come off easier on one coating compared to the other. Now a pre-soak foam and pressure rinse down quite easily removed just about all the dirt from both coatings quite well. But as you will hopefully see, it did very little to remove any water spots on either section. And you'll hopefully see shortly that although a hand wash did help remove a few of the lighter water spots, it really didn't do all that much better to remove the vast majority of the water spots on either section. 
but what you will hopefully see is that the section with the art to shine graphene coating is less affected by the water spot mineral deposits compared to SQL 2K. So whereas the mineral deposits have substantially reduced the positive water behaviour on the side with SQL 2K, they've only mildly affected the hydrophobic behaviour on the side with the art to shine graphene coating, which is definitely interesting and worth mentioning. To try and help lift off the water spots and marks, I used NV Shift, which is one of the best water spot removers I've used, that doesn't tend to harm coatings but definitely helps remove mineral deposits. Now as you'll see, I started by just lightly treating the panel with the acid base cleaner and then I continued reapplying the chemical, letting it sit for longer and working it in more aggressively with each subsequent application. Now there's no denying that NV Shift definitely removed a substantial amount of the mineral deposits, as both coatings started beading and sheeting the water so much better after its application. But as I continued treating the panel, you'll hopefully see that in relation to removing the majority of the visual water spots, there was really no difference from one coating to the other. Which basically means that those water spots have become water etchings that aren't going to come off with any chemical and will need to be compounded or polished off which will obviously remove and compromise the coatings to some extent. In the last couple of years, this is what I've seen with every single graphene coating, or at least the good ones that I've tried. That yes, graphene potentially has the ability to be less affected by water spots or mineral deposits killing its water behaviour, but it just doesn't seem to be any more resistant to the visual water spot marks or etchings compared to a ceramic coating, which quite honestly is a much bigger problem as you can use water spot removers to restore the hydrophobic behaviour of almost any good ceramic coating without hurting it, as you would have seen here. But it's significantly harder to remove visual water spots without removing the coating, whether it's SiO2 or graphene based. I'll talk more about this later on, but from what I've personally seen during my own testing with graphene coatings, is that they're just as susceptible as SiO2 based coatings when it comes to water spot etchings. And although graphene coatings seem to really push this water spot resistant characteristic, I think it's really misleading. Now back to the first test panel with a single layer of each coating, I'm going to start by having a look at the hydrophobic behaviour of the Art the Shine graphene coating. Now as you would have hopefully seen in the previous water spot test, there's just no denying that the Art the Shine coating has some really great water behaviour as it sheets and beads the water quite impressively. Now there's no denying that SQL 2K itself also has fantastic hydrophobic behaviour and for its price it's in my opinion the best value ceramic coating on the market today. But I do have to say that the Art to Shine graphene coating does seem to sheet the water a little quicker and also seems to have slightly better water bead contact angles which really puts it a step ahead of SQL 2K in that area. But in all fairness, C-Quartz and other coating brands make many other higher performing coatings that are still significantly cheaper than the Art to Shine graphene coating. And it needs to be said that many of those ceramic coatings have just as good, if not even potentially better, water behaviour. So it's not like this level of hydrophobic water behaviour doesn't currently exist in certain ceramic coatings on the market. But with price, ceramic or graphene content aside, I think Art the Shine has done a great job here regardless, and I also think that just about anybody is going to be pleased with this coating's hydrophobic abilities. The next test was evaluating the chemical resistance of this coating using an alkaline based cleaner in the form of CarPro Multi-X at quite a strong 1 to 2 dilution ratio. 
I started by lightly hitting the panel with the chemical in a touchless manner and then getting more and more aggressive and physical with each subsequent application. Now both coatings resisted the chemical quite impressively to start with, taking into consideration that it was a very strong concentration that can immediately strip lesser paint protection products instantly. But I don't think there's any denying that the outer shine coating performed noticeably better here to begin with, even rejecting the chemical initially and just not allowing it to sit or dwell on the coating as effectively. So what I would say is that for the first two thirds of the testing, the outer shine coating was really difficult to break down by comparison and showed very little deterioration. But once its hydrophobic behavior did become a little compromised, it did actually start breaking down faster than c UK, which seemed to have a more consistent degrading performance from start to finish. So by the end, it actually became a lot closer. The biggest difference, and hopefully you'll see the exact thing happen again on the second test panel, is that the outer shine coating seems to have this impenetrable shield at the beginning, but once it's been pierced, it just seems to break down quite rapidly. Whereas C quartz tended to break down faster to start with, but actually stayed fairly consistent and really hung in there till the end. Now, I don't want to take anything away from the outer shine coating as I think it did perform pretty well overall, but I did think it was quite interesting how it behaved during this test by comparison which as I mentioned was almost identical to the second test panel which we'll have a look at right now. So as you guys have a look at the rest of the footage, I'll just sum up this video with my personal thoughts and conclusions. Firstly, I believe After Shine's graphene coating is a well-performing coating. It looks and feels really nice, has great water behavior and chemical resistance. So it can certainly hold its own with most consumer-based ceramic coatings and even compete with some professional ones, which for its high asking price is definitely important. However, I think its application and user experience needs work, as it could definitely be better. But when I think back to ceramic coatings 10 years ago, most of them were also quite difficult to apply. So I don't want to be too judgmental as graphene coatings are still relatively new. I also don't want to be too critical about its price, because newer technologies are always initially expensive. But 280 Aussie dollars is a lot. And I think for that kind of money, I do need to be a little critical. With every single video review I do, I know there's always more that can be done and shown. But I spent almost a full week over the course of a month testing out this graphene coating in my own time to be as thorough and fair as I could before making this review. And all that testing is what I based my conclusions on. So as much as I think it has a lot of good things going for it, there's nothing I've seen in the Art the Shine graphene coating that I haven't seen in many quality ceramic coatings that I currently use, and that's a problem for me. But I don't want to single out Art the Shine here, as I've had similar experiences with over a dozen graphene coatings I've tried over the past two years, and the Art the Shine has actually been one of the better ones. The reason I've been holding off on doing a review on graphene coatings is because in my opinion and experience to date, the technology of graphene just isn't quite there. And I just didn't want to do a review on a graphene coating that in essence is no different than what we currently have with ceramic coatings. But with so many of you guys constantly asking for a graphene coating review, I thought it was time. There's been a promise with graphene coatings that they will be resistant to water spots but they just aren't, not yet. 
and that they will be far more superior in relation to self-cleaning, dirt and dust repellency, as well as chemical and environmental resistance. But they really aren't, at least not yet. And that's not to say that they are bad in those areas, but there's just no significant difference either way. So effectively what I've seen is that graphene coatings tend to have horrible user experiences and are yet to truly separate themselves from ceramic coatings or surpass them in any substantial way. You have to ask the question, why hasn't Sequartz, Optimum, Geon, G-Technic or any of the larger ceramic coating brands released a graphene coating yet? Is it because they lack the ability or resources? I really don't think so. Is it because they are ignorant to this technology and have no interest? The answer is no. And if you think these brands haven't been experimenting with graphene, you'd be sadly mistaken. And if you think they couldn't put out a well-performing graphene coating tomorrow, you'd also be dead wrong. The reason is, and this is just my opinion, is that there's a far greater potential to create a graphene coating that applies nicely and just blows ceramic coatings out of the water in relation to performance. So they don't want to just put out a good graphene coating that really doesn't perform all that much better to the existing coatings, as what's the point? And it could actually hurt them moving forward if and when they develop a truly fantastic graphene coating that really stands apart. I'm fascinated in the science behind graphene and a lot of other detailing technology, but what really matters to me in the end is how a product performs and if it lives up to its claims. And I just can't say I've seen that with graphene coatings to date. Yes, graphene is the hot new word in the detailing world. And just about every brand is going to put out a graphene product, no matter how it really performs, and no matter if it's really got a substantial graphene content, or if it really adds any benefit beyond the current technology. The biggest thing that hurt ceramic coatings when they first took off was all the false and misleading information surrounding them. And I just don't want to be a part of that same BS and hype when it comes to graphene coatings. It may be ignorant of me to think so, but I just wish that detailing brands would hold off on releasing average graphene products until the technology allows them to release an amazing graphene coating that is undeniably and unquestionably superior to what's currently out there. I'll leave you guys with this final point. 10 years ago, graphene was predicted to be a widely used technology that by today should have been widespread throughout so many industries, from electronics to building materials, construction and even cars. But it just hasn't progressed as predicted. In fact, we aren't even close to its widespread use because the technology of its production is still lacking. Yes, there is a good chance that graphene coatings may be the next big thing when it comes to paint protection. But nothing's for sure guys, and by the time graphene has progressed to the level that it needs to be, the next big thing could be just around the corner, making it obsolete. So if you're curious and have the funds to try it, I don't think you'll be disappointed, but someone is just going to have to explain to me how this or any other graphene coating currently on the market is better than existing ceramic coatings in real terms, rather than being a scientific promise yet to live up to its claims. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. We could drive along an ocean reflecting the sun Or make a bed of green atop a wide open sea under a canvas of blue, I would draw ever nearer to you To feel the dew on your skin, that is how it would begin For summer is for falling in love Disregard the thought of ever having to part
for summer is for falling. 